So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your very own CLI application in C++. So a CLI application is basically the application that's run in the terminal to perform all the basic tasks that we might do every day, such as the ls command to display what's inside your directory, or the clear command to get rid of uh, what's been printed out into the terminal. There's a lot of tasks and things that we might want to automate that might require us to do a CLI application. So say if there's a task that you do every day, such as editing certain text files or whatever, you might want to create your own CLI application in order to automate this so you have more time to do whatever else. So you're probably wondering why you would want to do this in C++ to begin with. So for most of these CLI applications, we normally just create a shell script that automates some of these things like LS or file manipulation or whatever. And that could be handy for certain very basic tasks, but there's a lot of functionality that you just don't have in the shell language. For example, if you want to do anything with classes or objects, or you want to do any sort of complex computation or whatever, it's quite difficult to actually do this in the shell language itself. In terms of other languages, such as Python or God forbid Node.js, the problem with these languages is that they just don't have the performance that C++ does. Most of these CLIs that we already use every day on the Linux platform, such as LS or grep or whatever, they were originally developed in the C language because of this performance and because it has a lot of uh, ability to interact with the lower levels with pointer and address manipulation that you just don't have in these higher level languages. So yeah, C and C++ are the king, and they're not going to be going away for a long time, despite how difficult it may be to develop in them. And you know, sometimes it is just more handy to develop it in a shell script, for example. And I'm actually going to be making a video in the near future on a CLI that I've developed with a shell script, so stay tuned for that, I guess. So before I get into the actual application itself, I should probably explain why I want to create a CLI in the first place. So originally I was going to show you something with file handling and various other stuff and what happened was I got this example from I think it was the man page on the GPG on the uh, GPG website or whatever but basically I found this source code and as you can see when I went to print it out um, it's all been indented with like a tab or whatever which is very annoying so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to create a basic CLI application that takes in a file name such as this file and basically it inundents all of the lines so I want these to be just over here so there's no indentation. Now there's probably a few different CLIs out there that already do this but I just wanted to create one for an example in this video. Okay so first thing I'm just going to create a file name that CPP so the first thing I'm going to do is just create the basic main function and it's going to take two arguments. So the first one is going to be an integer uh, called argc. I'll explain what these are in a second. And then we're going to do a char array uh, called argv, just like this. So what this is, is this is the best practice for when you want to take in arguments into your CLI application. So normally when we have a CLI application, say ls, we might want to add a flag or there might be some sort of uh, argument where you need to specify a file name, for example. And when we want to do this into the program, we specify this. So the argc is basically the number of arguments that were specified. And this just takes in the strings or whatever that were specified in the arguments. I'm also just going to specify using namespace std so that we don't have to, you know, specify std black whenever we want to print something out or whatever. So instead of uh, watching me type all this out, um, what I've done is I've just printed this out to the screen and this is an example that I found a long time ago which is basically just a way of getting in the arguments that you've specified in the command itself. So what this is is basically just a while statement, uh, a while loop should I say, and a switch statement with cases for the individual arguments that you want to specify. So what it does is it calls a get options command, but 
basically what this does is it's a really handy uh, function for getting the arguments that were specified in a command. It basically just goes down to the various cases and in this case it assigns a value, f value, which I specified up here. And this is just some handling to make sure that the user doesn't specify any characters that we don't want. So to show you here, I'm just going to add in another case for i, which is going to be the indentation. So what I want to do is I want the user to be able to specify a file name, which is here. And I also want them to specify an indentation if they want, or if it doesn't, then default is just going to be four, for example. Um, I haven't created the variable yet, but I'm just going to say i value and go up. And then just break. Okay, and up here I'm just going to specify int i value i value. So I'm just going to specify char star i value. And what we're going to need to do is convert this to an integer before we use it. Uh, there's a pretty easy way of doing this just using typecasting which is so before we do that I'm just going to specify the integer that's going to be uh, I'll just call it my I'll just call it iVal or whatever so yeah iVal is equal to int and then I'm going to do all this i value charge that in and yeah, that should just convert it to an integer real quick. I forgot to put the semicolon, sorry. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the stream handlers that are going to allow us to open and create a new file and everything. So the first thing we're going to need is an fstream, uh, I don't know, file, my file or whatever. And we're going to also need an open fstream. And what I'm, I'm going to call this write because that's what we're going to be doing with it. We're going to be reading in the values from one file and we're going to be writing them to a new one. So next thing we're going to open the file. So up my file. I'm going to take in this f value that was specified by the user. Oh sorry, I forgot to do open. And I'm also going to use this write a stream handler in order to open a new file that hasn't been created yet. So I'm just going to write dot open and I'm going to call this, I don't know, new file or whatever. Actually that's another good example of an optional argument you could specify. You could specify what you want the new file to be called I guess, but I'm not going to do that right now. Dot txt. And I'm just going to add in a check just to make sure that this file was actually open in the first place. If not my file, then I don't know, just print out again. Then I don't know, just print out, see out, get good, or whatever. And then a return zero. Okay, so the good thing about this stream handler is that you can basically just run a while loop on it and while my file and this will allow us to go through every single line in the file using the get line command get line and my file and actually we didn't create a string yet so i'll do that now i'm just going to create a string called line i'm just going to put line here so another fun fact, um, normally with the end of a file, uh, this value will just be minus one. So we can add a check to see if line is equal to, to minus one. And that will basically tell us if we've gotten to the end of the file or not. So there's another uh, function that I looked up when I was researching this. Uh, that's actually a part of the string type. So if I just do line.erase, what this will do is it will basically take in two integers uh, being the characters in the string and it'll just erase between those two integers. So say I want to erase the indentation between the first and whatever this integer is, this i value here. Okay. 
Okay, so what this will do is it'll just erase between this indentation or not. I should probably set this value to like something by default or at least put in a check, but I won't do that for the minute. So I'm just going the last thing I need to do is I just need to use this right uh, stream handler that I've created and I'm just going to write this line to the new file. So I'm just going to do write line and I'm going to put in the end L. Right, and that should be it. So this while loop is just going to go through all these values. It's going to get the line. It's going to check if it's the end of the file or not. And it's going to erase the values between the first value and this uh, integer that we specified, or the user specified, should I say. And then it's just going to write it to this new file that we created called newfile.txt. So now that the file is done, we have our CPP file. Uh, this is going to get into the main topic of this, which is actually turning this into an executable and making it a application that we can run on the command line. But um, the GNU compilers are a really handy tool. They're used for just compiling C++ and C programs in the command line. So you might need to install a package called build. I think it's called essentials. You'll need to install this, um, but for most people, for most platforms such as Ubuntu or Debian, this should probably be installed already, I would imagine. But basically, it's just going to give you access to the GCC or the G++ compiler. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to run the G++ and we're going to give it the name, which is main.cpp. And we're going to specify O, which is going to be the output file that we're going to use to execute the application. And we're going to give it a name. What will we call it? We'll call it an indent tool, maybe. Okay, so we have an error, so I'm just going to check this real quick. Okay, I'm not just, I'm just going to like not bother try to figure out what's going on here. So I'm just going to take out this um, integer value that I tried to do to try to be smart. So what it did was it created this executable uh, called indent tool. And if I run this now, okay, it's going to say get good to me because uh, I didn't specify this flag. And I'm just going to give it the name of this file here that we want to run it on. Okay, so what this tool that we created did was it created this new file called newfile.txt. And if we go into this, we'll see that it actually completely got rid of all the indentation that we had. So if you compare this to this file, you'll see that the indentation here, which if you wanted to compile this, I don't think you even could. This is, you know, this is just completely wrong. Like it won't be able to understand what's going on, I don't think. So now that we've created this executable, uh, that's all well and good. You know, we can run this dot indent tool um, when we're in this directory. But if we want to be able to run it anywhere in any sort of directory, and um, we're going to need to add it to the local bin directory. So if we copy uh, the tool that we created to user slash local slash bin, and um, okay, yeah, you're going to need to be sudo to do it, but yeah, you're just going to need to copy this. And yeah, so what that means is that if you're in any directory on your terminal, on your file system, uh, you're going to be able to run the you're going to be able to run the uh, tool that you've just created, indent tool, and it's going to say get code again. But yeah, that's just a rundown of how you can create a very simple tool in C++. And um, so say if you have a lot of tasks that you do every day in your computer, such as you need to operate with various files, or you need to just, I don't know, do anything. Now you can create it in C++ instead of relying on shell scripts all the time, which are good, you know, they have their place. But sometimes you want to do something where you need to use classes or objects, or you need to just perform something that shell scripts can't normally do. So yeah, I hope this was pretty straightforward, and if you have any issues, please feel free to let me know, and I'll see you next time.